What's up everybody? Been a while since I've done an album review and I need to get back in the habit of it, but I've been kind of distracted with things lately, so uh, I've listened to a few new albums um, and this one will be the first that I'll be doing a review of. And that is an album from the Danish band Pyramaze uh, called Contingent. And uh, they fall basically in the uh, power metal with some prog uh, influence, you know, some more experimental composition, I guess, it, which would technically make them prog, even though that's kind of a label that gets thrown around all over the place these days. If anybody that doesn't just play a straight 4-4, four, four, you know, blues scales throughout the song is, is becomes a, you know, a prog band. But anyway, um, I'm typically not a huge fan of power metal. Um, I've tried to get into it in the past. You know, I like some Man of War. Um, I've tried multiple times to get into Halloween. Haven't been able to cr crack that. Um, let's see what else. Gamma Ray. I, I listened to a few songs of theirs um, that were that were decent. Um, but I, overall, I couldn't get into the, uh, the style... It's just a little too happy, I guess, you know, um, and that's the best way I can describe it is upbeat and happy, you know, and lots of uh, lots and lots of choruses sung over because I think it's, you know, it's German. Um, Germany's kind of uh, one of the uh, big places um, for uh, power metal, basically uh, Iron Maiden's, um, you know, uh, stuff when Dickinson joined the band really influenced uh, a metal scene over there with the, the har guitar harmonies and melodies and stuff and and uh, the choruses and whatnot that you know have made Iron Maiden the stellar band that they are so yeah I mean it's it, I don't know I just nothing it didn't really click with me all that much other than the you know some individual tracks that kind of stood out so I've never never like I said been a big fan of power metal but this um, album, like I said, it does a really good job of mixing pow the power metal elements as far as the, you know, the kind of the real, you know, the, the s choruses with, you know, the, the kind of the group vocals, the catchiness, the melodies of it. But it does mix in some uh, different ideas and keeps things interesting. Plus, the, I, I think this is a newer vocalist. He may have been on the last album as well. Uh, I really like the vocals. The guy does a really good job. He doesn't try to be like a, a Halford type where he's trying to hit these, you know, high octaves and really just, he has a range that he stays in. You know, he hits some high notes, but um, like I said, he, he does a good job of of fitting along with the music. The music is very, you know, the composition is very interlocked. It, you know, you can definitely tell that they spent a lot of time um, getting everything or arranged so that it all flowed real well together. You know, it's, there's not with like, sometimes with progressive music, you'll have kind of wanking parts or guy or, you know, specific parts that where you kind of get distracted where, cause somebody's trying to show off the chops. You don't get that here at all, which is really nice. Every it's, it's, it's written more like an orca in a way, like an orchestral, um, composition where you have everything, you know, is fitting in playing a specific role, um, but it doesn't, nothing wanders off into more kind of, you know, noodling or freeform type stuff. Uh, it's a pretty long album. It's 13 tracks and it clocks in at just under 57 minutes. So it's a long listen. Um, yeah, like I said, there's enough diversity in the, in the songwriting and in the tracks. Um, there's some really good ones. Uh, the opening track, Land of Information, is, is amazing. It's just, it... The notes selection is great. Like I said, the, the vocals are great. It's got an interesting um, lyrical concept going on. Um, I'm assuming Contingent is a, is a, a concept album. I'm just going to go off you know, on a limb and assume that. I, the last album of theirs I listened to, uh, I think it's The Legend of the Bone Carver, was also a concept album. Um, I didn't really care for it. Um, this uh, just, you know, the... the didn't the the story didn't really interest me at all and uh, the music was okay and uh i w i meant to go and um and revisit the band when matt barlow um became the vocalist be you know you, the, who you are probably familiar with was with iced earth for a while and i i'm a really big fan of his i love his vocals so i figured hell if he's in you know you know fronting the band uh, and i like his vocals so much 
because uh, that's another thing with the power metal stuff. Like some traditional heavy metal, the lyrics can get kind of cheesy, um, cliche, you know, kind of un- uninteresting and original, which is why I like some more of the uh, avant-garde type music, because um, you get some more interesting ideas with uh, with vocals and, uh, I mean, not vocals, with the lyrics and stuff, so... But, um, I, like I said, I'm not, I have no clue what the story that they're telling is about. If it's a concept album, you'll have to research that for yourself. I wasn't overly, you know, worried about that aspect of it. Um, but yeah, the, uh, normally, like I said, also with power metal, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of, I'm really of keyboards in metal at all as a, you know, as a, an, an additional guitar, essentially. I like it when it's used more as like an, like an organ, you know, where it's adding in, uh, uh, you know, like with bands like Arcturus or uh, Borknagar, where it's it's adding in some atmosphere, some atmosphere, it's adding in some soundscape that's filling in certain areas, um, and, and then occasionally you'll hit, you know, into a, like a piano run or a break or, or more, you know, melodic part where it's just a piano piece, um, and that's kind of one of the big uh, problems I had with, you know, I've had with not this isn't uh, necessarily a a power metal band with like dream theater i just the i would rather dream theater have two guitarists and uh and a much more limited role for uh the keyboardist which i know is blasphemy if you're a fan of of dream theater and i'm not saying that jordan rudess isn't uh stellar and an amazing talent and amazing songwriter as well but to me it's i don't know i just never that part of metal or including inclusion in metal um at least when you're trying to get the heavier faster stuff it just i don't know i don't like really care to listen to a a synth guitar you know a synth solo if you if you will you know with the kind of when they pick some kind of weird uh weird sound to play along with it just you know it's, it's like an art it sounds like an artificial guitar basically you know so but that's just a minor quip and uh it the the synth and keyboards don't really you know, they don't stand out like a sore thumb. They they fit really well with the uh, with the uh, composition. So I that's to me that's not a negative at all, which is good because you know some aspects can take away to uh, you know to the point where it kind of becomes a kind of a crapshoot as far as the overall uh, quality of the song goes when you have parts that you know kind of stick out and annoy you. Um, but yeah, you've got some great guitar solos, some great lead work. It's, you know, you can tell that it's, it was, you know, it's not there to just, you know, here, look at how I can play. It's just, it's note for note, it fits well within the composition of the song. It gets in there, does the job, gets out. Um, the drumming, there's enough for, you know, you know, it's not just, you know, four, four, boom, tsh, boom, you know, type of stuff with some, um, it's, there's plenty of variety and some good fills, some good grooves, um, you know, not, like I said, not trying to be, you know, you know, like Mike Portnoy or, you know, something where, where him within the context of dream theater, or he's not no longer in dream theater or, uh, you know, any other drummer that uh, plays in that style of metal is, you know, doing a lot of crazy stuff. Um, the drummer here is, is, is getting in there, you know, um, getting in the uh, pocket, you know, playing the rhythm along with it, keeping everything going and pounding and pulsing, you know, and rocking. And then, uh, you know, gets, gets a chance to fill some quick fills or some groove ideas. Um, so yeah, it's very apparent that this, um, this album and the songs were, you know, when they were written, um, you know, the comp, when they were composed, they were, they did, they spent a lot of time making everything, everything fit, uh, really well, really tight, um, and and you definitely get some intros and some parts that almost come across as more of a orchestral and almost like you know symphony like. Um, so there definitely seems to be some classical uh, influence in there as far as you know classical music, traditional classical music. Um, the only track that I didn't really care for, and that's just my pet peeve, is a. Uh, I think it's the the tides that won't change. It's a it's a duet um, or two two vocalists, female and male. I'm just not a big fan of female vocals in the context of rock and metal music. Even though this isn't really a rock or metal song, I I don't know. They just bug me. I can't get into bands like Nightwish and and uh, or 
or anything like that. I'm not, not that these women aren't great vocalists. I mean, they're very talented, but to me, it's just like female vocals don't belong in metal. If that makes me sexist, I, you know, I guess I'm guilty as charged on that, but no, I'm not a fan of female vocals in uh, metal music at all. I really prefer uh, more pop vocals or R&B vocals or, um, Oh, you know, classic, more like classic rock type stuff um, than I do in, in in the metal. But it, it seems like that symphonic metal, power metal type of stuff, it, I guess, does fit more of the female operatic vocal you know style. But it's not a bad song. I'm not going to say it's crap. Uh, it's just I'm not going to sit there. I'm, I'll probably skip it, you know, um, unless I haven't listened to it for a while. But the lyrics, I'll give it this. The lyrics in the song aren't bad. Because that's one thing that really annoys me too, is you get female vocals, and then on top of that, you get um, some really cheesy-ass lyrics. Cliché as hell, uninteresting subject matter, blah, blah, blah. And that's a big uh, pet peeve I have, like I said, the symphonic um, metal um, in with the, the more female vocals. You know, the bands, the Finnish bands, I imagine, you know, some of the Swedish bands. Um, I just, it, like I said, if the if the vocals are cheesy... And, you know, it, to me, it's like nails on a chalkboard because I'm a snob when it comes to like, uh, or I mean, not vocals, but lyrics. I'm sorry. Lyrics, if lyrics are cheesy, it, it just can t completely throw me out of a song. Um, unless, of course, they're meant to be kind of cheesy or wacky, you know, like a guar or something. Um, so, yeah, but that, you know, that one, it's one track. It's probably, I don't even know if maybe like th three or four minutes. So, yeah, it's not a big deal. But yeah, overall, if you're a fan of power metal and if you're a fan of metal um, that incorporates some, uh, you know, some orchestral least stylings and some progressive elements, um, it's just that's you know pulled off flawlessly. Um, the vocals are, like I said, the vocals are amazing. I've never listened to this guy before, but uh, he, yeah, I if I would definitely check out. I would let's just say if I would check out other bands that he's in. Um, it, just to see what his vocals were like or hear what his vocals were like because uh, he, he like I said he's not trying he's not you know hitting these insane high screams you know like some bands um, you know more traditional metal you know like he's not going to hit like the Bruce Dickinson highs you know like the uh, um, opening of uh, you know the number of the beast or whatever but it doesn't need to and you've got some good uh, group vocals I guess you know um, during the chorus um, like I said, the, the choruses and the melodies are, you know, they're, you're getting tons of that, which is just part of, uh, I think, power metal. It's almost got, in a way, it's almost got like a like a pop um, rock or pop type uh, um, formula to it. Not, you know, I'm not saying it's like pop music, but, you know, you get in, you get, you know, the intros. I'm, I'm not, I can't describe all the different, you know, el elements you know, of songs, you know, like the bridge and, and the chorus and all that. You know, I don't know all of that, but. The chorus gets repeated a lot in a lot of songs, but if the chorus is cool and it's written well, uh, and the lyrics are good, you know, shit, I don't care, you can play that for 10 minutes straight. Um, but it also can be the Achilles heel for a lot of, uh, for me, for power metal, because these songs are meant to be played in front of a huge festival audience, probably in Europe, and everybody's, you know, drinking and having a good time, and they're, they know the lyrics by heart, and they're, you know, rocking out with the band, you know, which is cool, that's fine with me, that's, you know, what metal's all about. Um, but for me personally, it can if it if it's too upbeat and happy, and it doesn't have any because to me metal is just like you know with Sabbath and stuff. It's just metal sinister. It's got that kind of just edge to it, that kind of you know grim um, kind of uh, foreboding you know type of you know black clouds and lightning and thunder on the horizon type feel to it. It's got balls and it's got some sinister element to it. When you get a little too upbeat and happy, it, to me, it just kind of, I don't know, loses my interest. But this this album doesn't do that at all. Um, I mean, it, it gets to that point a little bit, but it, not enough for me to, to say that it's uh, a negative. So yeah, if you're a fan of power metal, definitely um, buy this album. Don't hesitate. You will get your money's worth. It's chock full of great, great songs. Just put it on and listen to it. Like I said, um, if you hear not uh, sure if you want to drop the money for it like i said you can go to youtube or something and and listen to the opening song land of Inf land of information um and play through it and tell me i mean it's that's it's a, that kind of quality is gonna you're gonna find throughout the whole album 
So if that song is good to, in your ears, uh, you sh- you'll love the rest of the album. So yeah, go out and buy it. Give these guys some support. You know, I'm not sure if they're when they're if they're going to be touring. Um, you know, if you can see them, uh, go support the bands live. You know, if you like their you know t-shirt designs, buy a t-shirt. You know, we like I, I like to harp on this once in a while is that we, you know, I try my best to support bands um, either with merchandise purchases or you know or live performance purchases when I get a chance because you know these guys are making a lot of money, especially on the internet where a lot of this you know most of these stuff is pirated, so they pretty much have to tour like you know like uh, Mad Men um, in order to pay the bills and probably have jobs on the side. So uh, and the. B- but which is the kind of the sad thing is you got so much garbage out there that takes no talent. Fifty people writing a song that's completely mindless. Um, when you've got and then you've got talented people like this that are you know um, so far above uh, these hacks that are making these um, the amazing music. You know if 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 I had my way, you know bands like this and songs like this would be the would would be represented the mainstream as far as the quality goes and people everyone would know about it and be playing it everywhere but you know that isn't the case uh so yeah um you know drop a line on their facebook page uh, or whatever and you know and 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 encourage these guys to keep putting out great music like this because as long as we have music of this caliber um, around, you know, that we can uh, enjoy, you know, it makes life more and enjoyable to get uh, overall. Cause I think music's a huge part of a lot of our lives, especially if you're into heavy metal. It's been a part of my life for 25 plus years. And I, my life would not be the same without the, without all the great music. I've, I've uh, had the uh, fortune of uh, being able to discover and listen to, especially now with the internet, because you can find stuff from all over the world. So yeah, uh, so that's about it for this uh, review. Um, God Dethroned and Hate both came out with albums, you know, the same week, I think. Holy shit, that's, I mean, with and with this, which is a pleasant surprise, it's been a great, it's been a great month um, for heavy metal. And there's a whole, and for, I've been looking at uh, stuff coming down the, down the road, uh, yeah, this year is going to be stellar. There's some more. I think there's a new Danzig album coming out. Uh, yeah, so good stuff. Um, and I also heard, um, for those who aren't aware, that Morbid Angel is back in the studio. And Eric Rutten is back on guitar recording with them. So maybe he will remind them of what made Morbid Angel an amazing band to begin with. And not put out another pile of shit like they did. They did with their last album, which was an embarrassment. You know, Carcass came out with uh, Surgical Steel and, and friggin' blew everybody away. That was like the the best way you could say, say to announce that they're back. And Morbid Angel basically did the exact opposite. Um, and I hear that Carcass is also working on the next album. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, I think uh, Bill Steer is just in the in a metal mood now after doing all of his uh, other projects. All right, guys, um, check the album out, and I'll be back soon with a new uh, album review once I get a chance to listen to the new Hate and new God Dethroned albums. Till then, everybody, take it easy.